Hello everybody. In my presentation I would like to go into two modern art movements that evolved in the late 1950s and early 1960s in southwest Nigeria, more precisely in the city of Oshogbo in today's Oshun state. Oshogbo and its artistic scene is today considered a brand within the discourse on modern Nigerian art, internationally known especially for the artists who emerged from the workshops organized by Uli and Georgina Bayer. Twin 77, Rufus Ogundele, Moraina Oyelami, Jacob Afolabi, Jimo Boraimo and Adebisi Fabumi are names that are associated with artistic creation in Oshogbo from the 1960s. In the course of my presentation, I will use two different terms for a better differentiation. The Oshogbo group, which describes the artist out of the workshops organized by the buyers, and the New Sacred Art Movement as a distinct movement around the artist Susanne Wenger. In order to trace the beginnings of these movements, it is worth looking at these three key figures who, as Peter Probst states, designed and articulated the movements rational. End of quote. Susanne Wenger and Georgina and Uli Bayer. As John Pemberton claims, I quote, the Oshogbo artists had their origins in the visions and commitment of Uli Bayer. End of quote. Patrons and explorers of art play a crucial role in the development of African modern art, especially in the case of art schools and movements or workshops. The foreign art lovers motivated the later on established artists to produce art, organized exhibitions and commented and published on art which they promoted themselves. Hopefully, in the course of the lecture, it will become clear how different the influences of the European patrons and or artists were presented within the movements and how and if they connected the local Nigerian actors as a collective. Susanne Wenger, born 1915 in the Austrian city Graz, has been a well-established Austrian artist in the midst of a world war involved in the establishment of the Viennese Art Club and other important art circles, but always in search of belonging in an artistic way. In 1949, she met the German publicist and linguist Uli Bayer in Paris, married him and moved with him to Nigeria shortly after, as Bayer was about to obtain a position at the University of Ibadan, which was only given to married couples. The arrival in Ibadan was a disappointment for Wenger and Bayer, since the colonial life on the university campus did not meet their expectations. Bayer moved to the extramural department and in 1951 his teaching activities led him to the Lantoro Mental Hospital in Abiokuta, where he and Wenger organized weekly painting classes for the patients. The results were shown as an exhibition titled Psychotic Art at the University Library in Ibadan in 1952. This project not only led the ways for the workshops organized by Bayer, which he initiated from the 1960s on to promote the local Oshogbo population's creativity, but it also reflected his and Wenger's interest in the discourse around the concept of Art Bru invented by French artist Jean Dubuffet in the 1940s. Dubuffet understood art bru to be a subversive alternative form of art as it can only develop beyond cultural norms and outside academic aesthetics. Bayer developed this anti-formalist concept further, culminating in the foundation of his experimental art workshops from which a successful generation of Nigerian artists emerged. After Bayer and Wenger divorced, Uli Bayer married the British artist Georgina Betts in 1964. From 61 onward, he initiated a number of cultural platforms, known as the Mbari Clubs in Ibadan and Oshogbo, with Nigerian artists and intellectuals 
such as Chinua Achebe and Duro Ladipo. Duro Ladipo, a playwright and composer, ran the popular bar in Oshogbo, which he remodeled together with Bayer as the legendary Mbari Mbayo with an official opening in 1962. The Mbari Mbayo Club in Oshogbo was the anti-academic counterpart to the club in Ibadan. In summer, the first experimental art workshop took place at the facility, conducted by art historian Dennis Williams. One year later, he was joined by the Dutch print artist Roo van Rossum. Having already met Uli Bayer in 59 in Lagos, Georgina Betts moved to Oshogbo in 63 and delved into its local art scene. She conducted the following annual workshops from 1964 to 66. The workshops from the beginning were open to the interested public, aiming for an open and lively atmosphere. It was supposed to be a place for experimenting, where students without any background in formal art education should work freely and spontaneously. The most outstanding works were selected by the initiators. Uli and Georgina Bayer strongly believed in the concept of the liberal individual, which is reflected in their educational approach. Georgina Bayer refused to adopt a Western concept of teaching and pursued introducing the workshop participants to media, techniques and subject matter with a direct reference to their environment by also respecting their various individualities. Therefore, she encouraged her students to draw from their inner inspiration, which was supposed to be informed by their own cultural background. It is important to note that this heritage was not considered to be a cultural determination, but rather a source for inspiration, as Katharina Greven claims it. Sharing these ideas, the Bayers and Susanne Wenger were eager to find and support what they regarded as authentic artistic expressions, a both formal and effective way out of the European modernist artistic traditions. As an example, I would love to show you a work by the artist Twin77, which I already mentioned in the title. Twin77 started his internationally recognized, later on influential career as an artist and painter in Oshogbo in 1964, where he met the buyers for the first time incidentally. He was a dancer and musician before. And he was not an exception. Most of the Oshogbo's group artists previously had been active as actors in Duro Ladipo's theater group or, like Jimo Buraimo for example, worked as an electrician or a driver or cook in the Bayer's haze. Twins' first encounter with Uli Bayer happened at the Imbarium Bio Club, where Bayer convinced him to participate in the workshop held by Georgina Bayer. Influenced by the novel of the Nigerian writer Amos Tutuola and his stories filled with fabulous creatures and fairy worlds of the Yoruba mythology, Twin77 created his first artworks, one of them being a pen and ink drawing, the first devil's dog from 1964. Four devil's dog have been created by him in total, two of them until today being part of the collection of Iberlewe House at the University of Bayreuth, an institution which was founded by Bayer in 1981. Like all of his colleagues, Twins also developed a distinctive style and techniques with a high recognition value, which brought him and his colleagues international success. In a conversation with Uli Bayer, B.C. Fabumi reports on his impressions and memories of the Oshogbo workshops. And I quote, There was a happy and at the same time feverish atmosphere. We didn't really know what the use of all this activity was, but we didn't ask any questions either. But we had a strange feeling of satisfaction when we saw a picture growing under our hands. A few days later, I was surprised to hear that I had been chosen with others to continue the work. Georgina set up two studios. So for the next three years, I worked every day with Muraina, Rufus, Afolabi and twins. 
We discovered ourselves. That was the greatest thing Georgina had done for us. Even though the four of us worked together and inspired each other, we never copied each other's work. End of quote. At the same time, another group formed itself around Susanne Wenger, who felt a strong connection to Yoruba culture and belief system and was initiated over 10 years into the Yoruba religion as a high priestess of Obatala, the Yoruba god of creation. By the time she became an important spiritual reference, the traditional Yoruba religion was considered to be primitive and backward and had almost been eradicated due to colonization and missionary activity. The sacred grove of Oshogbo, a sacred forest along the banks of the river Oshun, and place for the worshipping of the Yoruba deities, and the home of river goddess Oshun was threatened by the fight between indigenous and imported religions, conflicts of interest concerning the usage of the land and neglection. By that time, Wenger had been recognized for her spiritual authority and experience in restoring shrines and she was asked to rescue the sacred grove of Oshogbo. Shortly after, Wenger started working in the sacred grove and she continued to do so and dedicated her artistic lives to the grove. In the early 1960s, she founded the new sacred art movement a movement of young Yoruba artists like Adebisi Akanji, Buraimo Badamosi, Kasali Akangbe, who dedicated themselves to the restoration of the sacred grove and implemented their own creative artistic forms of expression. Venga and her colleagues used mainly cement to create flowing, dynamic and spontaneous sculptures, which were dedicated to the Yoruba deities. Following Wenger's belief that art is ritual, the restored shrines and created sculptures should claim to be new, innovative and therefore modern. Otherwise, they did not serve the gods. Through Wenger's mix of surrealistic ideas and the spiritual concepts of her fellow artists, they created a new imagery for Oshogbo's artistic expression in the appreciation of the gods of the shrines. Anthroposophical and surrealistic ideas as references to her artistic focus on Austria could have had a significant impact on Wenger's penchant for earthy materials such as cement, ceramics and concrete and may also have had an impact on the shapes in the sacred grove. In an essay from 1984, Wenger explained that all employees had been craftsmen like carpenters, bricklayers or blacksmiths before their encounter. Most of them had a superficial half-affiliation to the imported religions like Islam or Christianity, but were initiated into different Euro Yoruba cults. Especially Adebisi Akanji, her closest fellow with the group, is always mentioned by her and their special relationship explained through a telepathic connection which helped them to reshape, restore or build the shrines in the sacred grove. They never worked with plans or schedules and their mental communication and Adebisi's sense for forms and his rhythmic talent perfectly served Wenger's works, as she claimed it. The cement arc, called Arc of the Flying Tortoise, was the original entrance to the grove. It was entirely rebuilt by Adebisi Akanji and his son, Nuruddin Akanji, in 2014, under the direction of Shangodare Ajala. The sculpture had fallen down and completely disintegrated many years ago. It was indeed Adebisi Akanji who taught Susanne Wenger how to work with cement in the late 1950s. As Kasali Akangbe, a woodcarver, and Buraimo Badamosi, a sculpturer, also Adebisi Akanji brought into service his talent for Wenger's reality of form, but she emphasized the fact that they were still independent artists who got paid for their work in the shrines according to the tariff of the labor union by Wenger herself. 
At this time, the Monument Preservation Office paid Wenger and four security guards little loans. Material and loans for the artist came from the sales of her artworks in Nigeria as well as in Europe. Furthermore, the collective was considered by Wenger not only as a human one, but rather includes the Yoruba deities the group was working with in a spiritual sense. I quote, The collective in which I am anonymous is not a specifically hum human one, but a mixed one. I have to remember that I am an Olorisha. The Olorisha has a human dimension, but is equally abstract. I also do this anonymously and collectively, but I don't cap myself so much on human society. The artistic work of the new sacred art movement always served the gods of the Yoruba, primarily as a form of communication with them. In this context, the religious functions of the participating artists and above all Wenger should also be emphasized. In contrast to the Oshogbo group, the preservation of the shrines has always been the focus of artistic creation. Susanne Wenger was a central point of reference and a key member of a collective that was committed to religion and spiritual expression in its work. Wenger died in Oshogbo in 2009. The sacred grove is still a place for the active worshipping of the Yoruba deities and is being maintained by subsequent generation of artists. Although not all artists of the Oshogbo group are still alive, they are still closely rela related to each other and some of them, like Muraina Oyelami for example, are still active as artists. Their works are shown side by side in exhibitions and as the great masters they had and have a lasting and decisive influence on subsequent generation of artists in Oshogbo and Nigeria. All of them have achieved significant international success individually, but their names always remain in connection with Oshogbo and thus associated with the other participating artists. The decades of friendship continue until today. The encounters between the artists during the workshop in Oshogbo were not designed to form a collective which together pursued the same goals out of a common conviction. The workshops offered new opportunities for experimenting and eventually finding an own unique style or technique. As a shared and life-changing experience, it connects the Oshogbo group until today. From today's perspective, the group is perceived as a collective, although each of the artists pursued their own goals in their subsequent careers. Perhaps this aspect is the most striking difference to the intentions of the artist of the new sacred art movement. The development and implementation of one idea, a common intention as an endeavor, serving the gods. The spiritual component determines the idea of the collective as an artistic community. What was common to both groups were the forms of artistic expression which reflected political, cultural and social upheavals in the context of modernization and the beginnings of globalization. Nigeria became independent in 1960 and six years later the buyers left Nigeria due to the beginning of the Biafran civil war. The middle of the century was marked by political, social, economical and cultural upheavals and developments. Colonialism and globalization also play a central role in the artistic context. They brought access to new materials, techniques and ideas from the global north and especially the European countries and vice versa. Research on African modernisms and modernist concept contributes to an understanding of the development of post-colonial artistic concepts and national and anti-colonial ideas, identities and movements. In the context of Nigeria, Chika Okeke Agulu speaks of a post-colonial modernism and describes an analytical concept for the study of the complex connections between arts and the politics of decolonization in Nigeria. 
His main argument is that these connections between art and national ideologies are a central characteristic of post-colonial modernism as an international phenomenon. Each of the artists, whether belonging to the Oshogbo group or the new sacred art movement, is part of a story of overarching context, the history of Nigerian modernism before and after independence and the stirring dynamic processes in the middle of the 20th century. Thank you.